a a video courtesy of ghost gum regarding the one and only Burt Kreischer. So um, this title video is a bit sad. It says, why Burt Kreischer's movie flopped? I didn't watch it in the end, you know. I got it downloaded. I made a big deal about wanting to go watch it in the cinema. I got it downloaded via the pirate services. And then it came online on other streaming services, but I still haven't got around to watching it. Has anybody in the chat actually watched Burt Kreischer's movie? Because I never got around to actually watching it. Honestly, I never got around to watching it. Um, it just looked too terrible for me to start. And I just thought, you know what? I have better things to do with my time. So I didn't watch it. I probably should watch it. Um, but I never did get around to it. Even though, again, I didn't even watch it in the cinema. I didn't pay for it. I pirated it and shit. I did not fucking watch it. But according to people on the Burt Crasher Reddit, they were saying that it was way more it was a lot better than they thought it was basically it wasn't as bad as they thought it was but it was a lot better than they thought it was gonna be so that makes me think that it was shit <laughs> you know because the Burt Crasher fans on that subreddit are quite nice and charitable so I think they were being quite kind you know but yeah people sort of were saying hell no nah great movie never seen it big up crash I'm sitting, never saw it. Austin Casey, while going, I can't stand him. No, can't bring myself. To, okay, everyone in the chat saying no. So no one, no one watched this movie, right? No one watched it. Okay, did, did anybody actually watch it? What do you think of it? It it, it was awful. Says Jesse L. Okay, Jesse L. Watched it. Only podcast and video of it. It's probably us. Only heard of it. It was terrible. More people paid to watch Brendan special. <laughs> That's probably true. That's probably true. You know, more people probably who watch Brendan's paid to watch Brendan special. That is actually fucking true. Oh my god. Anyway, let's watch this video from Ghost Gum. Big up Ghost Gum. Great fucking channel. It's the title is Why Burt Crash's movie flopped. Let's see what he's saying here. A severe shortage in good. Let's go. One more time. Lately there's been a severe shortage in good comedy movies. Burt Kreischer's The Machine was supposed to be the revival of comedy. With marketing everywhere, a huge budget, and a star-studded cast, Sony Pictures expected it to be a massive hit, and they were severely disappointed. It lost over $10 million, was pulled from theaters after two weeks, and got bombed with bad reviews. Sony then paid Panic cut a deal with Netflix to recoup their losses because the movie was doing so bad. All of this for a movie about this guy. <laughs> Unfortunately for them. You know what's funny? He actually thought he was going to save comedy, the comedy movie genre. That's the size of his fucking ego. Imagine the hubris to think you as a non-actor, right, with no chops in the industry. Because you do a couple of podcasts and you have some viral clips of you talking about fucking kool-aid you thought that would translate to you being able to do like there's nothing wrong with having dreams and goals and big dreams and targets you want to hit but surely just because you would do podcasts why would you think you would have any ability to put together a good comedic movie like what especially centered around your own life and you being the starring role in it also it'd be different if maybe he was producing a movie about comedians that he was director of fair enough but him being the main st him being the main character right um both figuratively and literally and then thinking it was gonna work is fucking crazy especially considering how unlikable he is also i think that's also plays a part in it i think that also might so explains why a lot of these comedians are sorry a lot of these actors go out of their way not to be on social media and shit i think it's quite important for an actor i'd imagine not to be too much of a personality online you kind of want your work to kind of speak for you. So you kind of, you know, a bit, you're a bit reserved when it comes to social media. You don't use it. You don't do many interviews. Maybe because it helps to keep the sort of mystery when it comes to your movie. So people can't maybe not, they, people will always give your movie their chance because they don't know much about you. But with Bert, it's the opposite. You know way too much about him. So if you don't like him, you're not going to watch his movie, are you? So it's kind of a weird way to go with things. But hey, let's go them the biggest critique about this movie was probably the worst thing that could have been said it is very very boring literally nobody is talking about this movie it averages about a four or five out of ten on most outlets critics hate this movie audiences are indifferent to it it also peaked at eighth in the box office when it came out You're wrong. 
It's safe to say this movie was a flop. But what about the guy the story's based on? Whether as a result of this or just poor timing, Burt has received a lot more attention, although it's not the attention he wants. His problems have been brought more into the public space as a result of this movie, including his drinking problems, his beef with other comedians, and the mask of a fun party guy that he's known for slowly slipping. So that leaves us with the question, what the hell happened? I need to find the best way to learn math and science. Oh, fuck's sake, these fucking ads. It's brilliant. Whoa. Here's a new way to learn math, science, and computer science. Sorry about that. The Machine, starring Burt Kreischer, is a movie that works off of his most famous story of the same name. Burt has told this story so many times that it's basically become his identity. Can anybody- By the way, does anybody believe the Machine story? Does anybody believe the Machine story? Because I have a high, I have a, I, I have a high, high, high doubt meter on that fucking story in this, in this, in this entirety. I think the whole thing is a fucking lie, personally for me. I think the whole thing is a fucking lie. The whole thing is a fucking lie. Like, I don't believe a, a one inch of it. Even when, the, when I first heard him speak about the story, it was just one of those, it was the kind of story that you hear someone say at like a house party when they're trying to impress a group of boys or, you know, maybe there's a couple of cute girls in the room and they're trying to impress them. It doesn't sound believable in the slightest for me personally. I've never believed it. What do you guys think? X for doubt. Hell no. X. Um, I somehow made it without fully. Hear okay. <laughs> yeah. You're not missing out on anything. <laughs> I somehow made it this far without fully hearing the story. I bet you there's a huge group of people out there who have never actually heard the machine story in full. They have no idea what it is and they have no idea about knowing what it is either. It's one of those things where if you don't know about it now, you probably should never know about it. It's fucking bullshit. It's 35% true, like Hassan Minaj stories. Even that, I don't believe. No, I don't believe it. Because 35% is too much. Because maybe he did go to Russia. Maybe he did for school. Cool. But all the stuff that he mentioned in the story, bullshit. That's less than 35%. That's probably 5% of the story. Okay, I went to Russia, had a good time. Cool. But the rest of it made up. Anybody else name a Burt Kreischer joke? Burt's knack for being a good storyteller has led it to having over 50 million views on YouTube. The Machine, the movie, is basically a sequel to the story that totally happened, I swear you can trust this man. Exactly. Where Burt plays a fat, alcoholic John Wick who has to go to Russia to retrace the steps of his younger self. With such an iconic story, and more importantly, iconic views, Sony Pictures saw dollar signs. So they put an insane amount of marketing into this movie. They plastered Bert's face and belly over everything and anything. I mean, it was on the can. Honestly, man, when I saw this, when I was watching that UFC card, I was like, oh my fucking God. Oh my fucking God. What the fuck is this? This at multiple UFC events for the entire thing. It felt inescapable, really. Sony also somehow got Mark Hamill to be in this movie. All for a movie center. You know what's actually funny? Bert doesn't mention this movie anymore, does he? He doesn't mention this movie the same way that Brendan has suddenly forgot he has Tiger Thick Whiskey. I can't remember the last time I heard Brendan mention Tiger Thick Whiskey, and I can't remember the last time I've heard Bert talk about the machine story. It's almost like it didn't happen. <laughs> it doesn't exist. He doesn't talk about it at all anymore. And he was fucking on the promo run, talking about it nonstop, driving, and the moment it flopped, he completely forgot about that bitch around Burt Kreischer, who has acting credentials that are subpar to say the least. Even if Burt isn't as recognizable as somebody like Adam Sandler or David Spade, Burt and Sony thought he has a hardcore enough fan base that'll latch onto anything he does, which is 100% true. Trust me, I know. <laughs> so they had Burt do a huge press tour, going on every podcast Jesus to promote Christ. the new movie, including the fighter and the kid. It's like a chocolate chip with sauce all over it. And you got a feel for the guy. He seemed so excited. This could be his big break. And honestly, the way it looked before the movie came out with the marketing, press tour, <laughs> attention, it wasn't out of the realm of possibility that this movie could be a huge success. The machine might be a blockbuster, not in the Brendan Schaub way. The marketing, the no, you know what? I'm not going to lie. Before the movie came out, 
I had a feeling, or I thought initially, it would be good based on just like, it just being like a fun, carefree, kind of not taking yourself too serious movie. Because everything in the cinemas now is so political and agenda driven, I thought if he came in and just made a really fun, kind of silly movie, people would run to it because it would be like a respite. It's sort of like when Top Gun came out. When Top Gun by, you know, with Tom Cruise came out, it was sort of like just uh, the opposite of all the agenda driven stuff that was on the cinema. So you just could go and watch it and just enjoy it without being lectured or anything, right? But I guess the issue that I didn't realize was that the movie has to be good. It doesn't matter about the agendas and stuff. If the movie at its core isn't good, it doesn't matter, <laughs> you know, what you're doing and how silly it is. So that was one of my worst takes ever because I remember I was really hot on the idea that this movie would be somewhat successful because of how agenda-driven and political the movies are in cinema. But I got it completely wrong, completely wrong. The views, the laugh, it was all set up to succeed. So on May 3rd, 2023, the movie is released and the crowd went mild. At first, the machine had some positive reviews from the most hardcore fans who saw the early preview. However, even some of them said it was a bit much. And when even the most hard- And I think if I'm not mistaken, in London, it lasted in a cinema, I think a week. I swear to God, because I was gonna watch it one particular weekend I couldn't go. Tried to book it the sec the following weekend. It was out of cinemas already. It lasted one week in our cinemas. If I remember correctly, it was one of those um, limited releases. So it wasn't even available in all cinemas. It was only available in certain sort of locations and shit. Obviously in central London and other parts of London. But it was only available in select branches. So it lasted one week in the UK and only in select branches. So it must have done terribly over here. So you can imagine if it did badly in America... Just imagine how, you know, Bert isn't as well known over here as he is over in the States. So it must have done terribly here too. It must have been one of those cinemas where you walk into the room and it's like one person watching it. Hardcore fans are calling your movie boring? Red flags should start flying. If the hardcore audience thought this, imagine what the general audience is gonna think. Exactly. Once the reviews started to come in from average movie viewers, the scores started to drop pretty hardcore but not to the point where it's so bad that people started to see it like Cats, for example. You see, there are good movies and there are bad movies. There are also good, bad movies. Oh, hi, Mark. This is none of those. <laughs> this is a kind of boring movie where there are minimal reviews on YouTube. The wow. <laughs> I didn't even realize that. There's hardly any reviews for the movie on YouTube. Oh God! You know what? I kind of want to watch it now. I kind of want to watch it. I kind of need to close this loop. I need to restore. I need to um restore my honor, right? <laughs> and watch the movie. I'm actually gonna watch it because I've got it downloaded on my laptop. I literally have it there on my laptop. I'm gonna fucking watch it and actually do a review. That's fucking horrible, man. I feel so bad for the guy. I'm not gonna lie. But again, the hubris and the ego is fucking crazy. She landed in the worst spot a movie could possibly land. Forgettable. The general consensus seems to be it's the kind of movie you'll watch on a flight while nodding off on the two milligrams of Ativan you took beforehand. It released with very little competition at the time, besides The Little Mermaid, Jesus. and somehow still finished in eighth place after two weeks. Now, Sony had invested a budget that was the size of half the GDP of Tuvalu into this movie. A movie about the guy whose most famous achievement for years was being named the number one partier at Florida State University. You'd think they want to let this thing ride a bit and see how it does, but no, they pulled the plug on it after looking at the numbers, which were abysmal. You see, Sony had done the marketing right, but they forgot basically everything else. The original machine story is from 2006. They acquired the rights to the movie in 2018, and the movie came out in 2023. Wow. I didn't know that. They acquired the rights to the machine store in 2018. Why did it take so long to come out? Oh, I guess COVID, isn't it? COVID was like what? COVID was the end of 2019? So maybe that's why it took so long to, for the movie to come out. That delay of COVID, and then by the time COVID's over, it's 2023. So basically, the machine suffered the same fate as like uh, uncut gems because i always felt like julia fox from uncut gems her career kind of got fucked over because of the pandemic i'll be up austin case appreciate it brother you will never get the time back 
Don't do no, it. No, 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 no. I have to. Austin, I have to, brother. I have to. I have to restore my pride. I have to give myself that feeling of like closure, you know? I need some closure. It's like linking back up with an ex that one time just to get that one more hit or that one more smooch. You just need that closure. And I need to have the closure again. I need to fucking find out what's going on because my early predictions were so bad. I need to, I need to somewhat see it in HD. Was I really off? Or is the movie not that bad? I need you to see it because movies also are kind of subjective. Everyone's got kind of different tastes of what they kind of go into. Like, I'm not expecting this to be a fucking Scorsese production, do you know what I mean? But people are saying that even if you would actually watch movies, a lot are saying no. It's actually really, really bad. So I'm curious to see, <laughs> will I agree? Or do I also have really bad taste? I'm not really too sure. But let's see what I'll go on. But big up what's in case, I appreciate you, brother. Sure, the pandemic delays didn't help, but let's be honest, people aren't as invested in the machine as they were six years ago. Boring. But even if it did come out six years ago, it's not a retelling of the story or a dramatization of it, it's a completely new story that takes place after the original one that's not nearly as compelling. Oh, why did they do that then? Why did they do that? It's not even based on the original story. It's a continue. Come on, man. Sony has themselves to blame too. It's Sony and Burt's fault, basically. They fucked it, innit? Sony and Burt fucked it. Why would you do the machine story and not just have it centered on the machine? Part of it. Why would you make it, oh, here's him being... Uh, who, wants, who wants to see adult machine? Daddy machine. No, we don't want to see daddy machine. This video is sponsored by... Oh, for fuck's sake, more ads. Sorry about this, guys. All the ads in the fucking world. Okay, cool. Can we skip now? Thank you, God. Okay, more ads here. Ready meals. Cool. Everyone's getting paid. Nice to see. Protein or more per serving. Factor legit saves me. So okay, Factor saves you lots of time. A whopping 50. 50% off your first Factor box. That's that's factor75.com with code ghostgum50 to get a to get 50% off your first box. After a week, Sony realized this was going to be a huge flop commercially and critically, and they were right. So after another week in the box office, they decided to recoup their losses, pulling it from theaters and cutting a deal with Netflix, pretending like this movie never even existed. <laughs> Keep in mind, the budget for this movie was $20 million. Jesus Christ, bro. To be fair, though, to be fair, to be fair, let's be also fair. That movie didn't look like it was made with $20 million. Let's be honest. Like, movies just cost too much to make in general because that's insane what are you spending 20 million dollars on to tell the machine story really and truly they fucked themselves there you fuck yourself by fucking doing it honestly come on man come on come on which does not include the insane marketing campaign it only made back 10.7 million so they easily lost over 10 million dollars like wow <laughs> Uh, what a fucking fail! I didn't know it was that bad. No wonder he's not speaking about it anymore. Then, I wonder what happens with movies. Is it like music contracts? Do you have to? Do you owe that money, or is it just some? Is it just he's been he's been blacklisted now? Because I'm assuming most likely Bert is never going to get another movie, right? Most likely, or is it work like music industry where you have like an advance and you have to work off that debt and shit? What's happening now? Because that's a lot of money he's fucking cost that studio. Likely a lot more than that, however, we'll never truly know. But Bert had been promoting this movie like it was his big break. And if you know anything about Bert, he has the ego of a man. Hey, big up Space Sky. I appreciate it, brother. What was this? YouTube Prime membership fund. <laughs> okay, cool. I'll get YouTube Premium. You know what it is? I was using a fucking ad block, but now YouTube have got this new thing where they've kind of um, disabled the use of ad blocks now, they don't work on YouTube or the one I was using doesn't work anymore. And it makes you basically have to get premium or to put the ads on. So it kind of is what it is, but yeah, I'll get premium. I'll get it. I understand it's a bit annoying. I get it. But for now, let's make do, but I'll get premium. I'll get it. As soon as we end this, I'm going to get YouTube premium. Okay. I guarantee, I promise you guys, apologies. 
But big up Space Guy, I appreciate you. <laughs> YouTube premium membership fund is fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> of a man who plasters his face over his tour bus. So you can imagine this didn't sit well with him. Because no matter which way you look at this movie, it's a flop. Even if it was poorly received but made a shit ton of money, I think it would have satisfied old Bert. But it wasn't that. It was a critical and commercial failure. It was marketed so hard for his fan base, a fan base that Bert and Sony wildly overestimated the size of. Bert made some surprise appearances at movies. Yeah, that's the thing as well that I don't understand. I wonder what, what goes into people's brains. Because in my opinion, I don't ever like, for instance, like, just because I might get a thousand views of my video doesn't mean if I put on an event in a thousand seater arena, I'm going to sell it out. It's not like for like. So I wonder why the studio thought because Bert has videos where he has millions of views that he's going to get millions of people around the world watching his movie. That's not the case. Like a lot of Bert fans, I'd assume, like most podcast content creator fans are his fans for different things. Some of them like him on his own pod. Some of them like him on your mom's house. Some of them just follow him on, on, on social media. Some of them like him on Two Bears, One Cave. It's all different. It depends. It's all, it all kind of, um, it's kind of a, it's all, it's all, segmented in a weird way it's not really like like for especially when it comes to movies as well um not everybody watches movies i know for me personally um i watch a lot of old movies but the current ones nowadays i hardly go to watch them to be completely honest and i'm sure there's a lot of people out there who don't watch any movies whatsoever so this idea that you're gonna get all these people to come out and pay for tickets and see your thing is a bit odd i'm honestly i'm surprised that a studio like sony wouldn't be a little bit more clocked on and would think that so would be so naive like that. It's a bit strange to me. Movie theaters for showings of this movie, where the crowd turnout was allegedly in single digits for one of those showings, which might be the most depressingly hilarious thing I've ever heard. It was also probably assumed that Joe Rogan's audience would eat this up. But what they didn't realize is a lot of them have turned on Burt recently. Exactly. Exactly. That's the main thing. Like, in 20... What? So the Machine story is 2016. Sony acquires the rights to the story in 2018. I think the sentiment around Burt Kreischer was a lot more positive and a lot more goodwilled around that period before the pandemic. During the pandemic and after the pandemic, his reputation went a bit down. People started to notice all the annoying things about him. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and especially on YouTube, there's a lot more videos about him as well, being annoying, compilations and whatnot. So... The, they should have struck while the iron was hot in 2019, 2018. Waiting until 2022 was too late. It's like making a movie with fucking Tom Segura now. Like, that's the worst time to do it because, you know, people don't really like Tom like that, like they did in the past. Same thing with bloody probably Joe Rogan, probably, right? Maybe Joe Rogan, you know, Joe Rogan in fucking LA would probably got a lot more goodwill from people, but nowadays people seem to be a bit turned off on him also. Not only on the Joe Rogan subreddit, but the Burt Kreischer subreddit seems to hate him. And if that's indicative of his general fan base, it seems the tides are turning and that's not a good thing for Burt. But the thing is, you can't blame people for this. From his obnoxious podcast appearances, his tryhard personality, his nails on a chalkboard laugh, and his elitism that would make you think being a comedian is like being a firefighter. A uh, comic's brain is so different than a, than a pedestrian's <laughs> brain. And like what, you know, like I can't help. I went pedestrian to a, is so funny, by the way. Oh. Uh, like saying that. <laughs> I, said, I said to a woman, I said to a woman. Yeah. That drives me crazy. It's like, we're not in the fucking armed force. Let's fucking react. Exactly. It's exactly. kind of easy to see why people dislike Bert. But worst of all, Bert's funny, laid back, party guy facade has been starting to give a bit. I mean, he's an old man now with kids. There's only so long you could be a drunk idiot. How do you do, fellow kids? Ari Shafir told a story about how Bert Kreischer had a meltdown because of food and not his own food food that somebody else was ordering but weirdly enough it seems ari is one of the only real friends that bert has everyone around him seems to be just an enabler the man is looking worse and worse in terms of his alcoholism i mean look at how bloated he is i don't think you can blame leanne his wife and his family for enabling him he just doesn't seem like a person that listens isn't it 
he's going to have to go through what he has to go through before he gets better. Or maybe he won't. But I don't think someone like a Burt listens to reason, especially now that he's got loads of money and he's become really famous and stuff, very successful. He's got less reason to listen. So I don't think you can really blame the family or the friends. Like, what else can you say to somebody like this? You know what I mean? After, especially like, especially listening to him on pods and stuff, the way he kind of rationalizes his decision-making choices and gives himself excuses to do stuff, it's sort of really infantile and a little bit psychotic and shit. It kind of is his own journey. You have to just let him kind of run the course. That's not from food, I'll tell you that. And it's clear he has no intention of stopping drinking. He can't even admit he has a problem. Consistently having 12 drinks is not normal. But what's weird about this is he used to be universally loved. He was that chubby, feel-good guy who would tell crazy stories. But what worked in 2016 doesn't necessarily work now. The machine might have even worked in 2018 or 2019, yeah. but the story's been told hundreds of times now. After a certain point, people probably just stopped caring. Men lie, women lie, but the numbers don't. <laughs> that might be true. That might be it. It might not even be about him personality-wise. It might not be about him being annoying. It might just be a fact that people just stopped caring after a while. It's just too long. 2016, the story originally went, vi went viral. 2016, it went viral. 2018 the, the acquired the rights and it only came out in 2023 that's way too much time in between you know way too much time what's booth mcgee saying nah he's annoying <laughs> okay fair enough however i should say even though this movie flopped <laughs> bert still sells out arenas rides on private jets and does very well with his podcasts Financially, he's fine. At the end of the day, it really only hurt his ego. But that's the thing with Bert. It's all ego with him. He needs to be liked at all times by everybody. Which Look at his eyes, bro. Imagine making drinking your entire personality that. Look at his It's all ego eyes. with him. He needs to be Look at those eyes, bro. Look at that. God almighty, bro. He must smell like fucking fire. Can you imagine what Bert smells like? Like in real life? Because he's definitely somebody that doesn't shower often, you'd imagine. Probably doesn't believe in washing his hands. Doesn't brush his teeth. Like he must smell horrendous. Because I remember back in there, I listened to his podcast. He used to talk about, he used to brag about how you would shower in the swimming pool. Do you guys remember that? That was a thing that you used to always talk about. Like, yeah, I took a, sh like, like he used to like bath in his swimming pool or in his garden or something. Like, it doesn't even rinse himself off in the outdoor shower. Like, just weird stuff like that. You're like, bro, that's not a shower. Big up Austin Casey. Have you heard the rumors going around that the married man that was getting his booty eaten by Taryn Manning was? Yeah, 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 yeah. Big up Austin Casey. Yeah, of course, I saw the red bar thing. I don't believe it, though. Personally, I don't believe it. I don't think that's true. I don't believe in the slightest. I don't believe it in the... I'll get this play out of the way. I don't believe this in the slightest. I don't think that's true. Nope. I don't believe it. Um. That woman is a way too unhinged for Bert. I don't think Bert would be with that person. She's a little bit too unhinged. And I think that story could apply to anybody. But I don't think that's Bert, personally. I don't think so, personally. No, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I would have more. I have more. I would believe more. This is a weird thing to throw out here. But again, hear me out. If you told me some OnlyFans girl or a lady of the night had a story about Bert, I'd believe that more. I think he's more prone to do that than just some random, you know, Hollywood actor woman, you know, from, I think she, what, what was she from again? Orange is the New Black or something, right? I think he's more off, he's more prone to maybe do like a, an OnlyFans woman hookup thing or some porn woman or some lady of the night, some escort thing. I think that, was, that might happen if that's the case, right? But I don't think the other, I don't think that, I don't think some random actor woman will be the thing. I don't think so, personally. I think, I, I see something, I see like a Las Vegas type of, of, of affair, right? Some professional escort type of lady being a situation, but not that lady, not personally. I don't believe the rumor. It's funny, it's fun, don't get me wrong, but I don't believe it. 